So in the show, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ronsley Vaz. Ronsley is a speaker, author, marketer, and all-round entrepreneur. He is the author of the book, Amplify, How to Raise Your Voice, Boost Your Brand, and Grow Your Business. His podcast, Bond Appetite, is Australia's number one food podcast on iTunes and receives between eight to 12,000 listens a day. Ronsley is the founder of a content marketing agency called Amplify, which has grown from zero to 12 staff in just 10 months. Ronsley has his MBA in psychology and leadership, and before all of that, he has his master's in software engineering, as well as a diploma in financial services. Ronsley's journey has seen him specialize in a variety of industries, but before killing it as an entrepreneur, he worked as a DJ, software engineer, financial advisor, chef, and restaurateur. His new adventure, uh, or his new venture, I should say, is Amplify, and it's all about converting audio into content eco chambers. He and his team help clients create content and turn it into genuine digital assets that allows them to grow their business and scale. I'm really pumped to have him on the show today, but enough out of me. Let's get him out here. G'day, Ronzi. How are you doing today, mate? Nice. I'm really good. Thanks for having me on the show. That's uh, that's a very flattering. Actually, I got to change half of that stuff, but that's really good. Cool. <laughs> well, mate, I, I I I pulled it off your your your, your website uh, amplifyagency.com. So uh, I was really intrigued by your story, and and a lot of people might be asking, what am I getting an Australian entrepreneur on the show for? This is an investing in the US podcast show, but. We're going to get into that in a little bit, into the nuts and bolts. But before we do, in the introduction there, I summarized a bloody long list of past jobs and careers. Do you want to maybe rewind the clock and walk us through how you got to where you are today? Uh, one foot in front of the other, to be honest. <laughs> uh, you know, everything in hindsight seems like 2020. Uh, I think listening back and, and, and sometimes when I hear this kind of stuff, I... I can't really believe that that I've actually been through some of that stuff. Right. Um, um, it's just literally been, you know, how can I be better than I was yesterday? And that kind of, uh, that's always been sort of drilled. I, I actually don't know where I got it from, but it's something that I've, I've kind of uh, tried to live up to every day. And there are some days that it does work out and some days that it does. Um, but I think I have shiny ball syndrome and that's why I, I have, <laughs> So, <laughs> um, different designations. In fact, yeah, I find that surprising. I really do. Like when I listen back and I kind of think of all the different things that I've done, I, I, I really think that 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 is just shiny ball. I'm like, oh my god, that's that that's new. That's fine. <laughs> let, let me go and chase that. Um, so that's really been. I mean, I grew up in India, so you know, we first do it to figure out what we want to do the rest of our life uh that's just normal um we we it's drilled into us that the more degrees we have the, you know the, the better our chances of 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 making right. our way through life so i um i i was told that i had the aptitude to be an engineer so that's <laughs> how i got into engineering I, I i have to say that i loved computers and still do and i think that gives me a huge advantage in business because everything is computerized these days. And I think that people should pick stuff up uh, a lot quicker, but I forget that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a trained computer engineer. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I did, I did my engineering in India before, before working there and then realizing that the market wasn't for me. It was very based on, I'll tell you what to do. And I'll tell you how to do it. And I'll tell you what to do. I won't tell you why. And you can't think for yourself and, 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 you know, in India, it was really interesting because I just stood out or I stuck, I just stood out for no reason, even if I was walking down the street. And um, I knew I had to leave uh, to, you know, explore what else was out there. Uh, so I was born in Bahrain. My mom's Portuguese, my dad's Indian. So I already wow. had a mixture and I'm Ronsley. So, you know, there's no other Ronsley that I know around. So it's like, <laughs> oh, I've got to try something new and different and, and not be the norm. Um, and luckily, dude, I, I arrived in Australia. Uh, the options were the States and, and the UK. In India, the States are the glorified, the promised land, really. Mm -hmm. for Indians. It's like it's, you know, once you get there, your life is made sort of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, but, mate, I, I arrived here. You know, I wanted to, 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 to come to Brisbane primarily because, you know, all the Indians were going to Sydney and Melbourne. And I'm like, I want, actually want, you know, I want to check out different other cultures and, and I arrived here and it's been, it's been 18 years. I haven't been homesick. So, wow. Um, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, mate, I know Bris Vegas very well. Uh, I went to University of Queensland in St. Louis. Oh, really? For all those people who are listening out there, yes, I did just call it Bris Vegas. It, it has this weird name and it's uh, in Queensland. Check it out. Uh, but, but Ronzi, that's a huge step. Like, I know myself leaving Australia to go, leaving Brisbane to go to the United States, it's like a huge leap of faith, right? And you're leaving your home, you're leaving your loved ones. I left a job, a very secure job, and I'm a civil engineer uh, in Brisbane. So walk me through that, just like you must have had the inner demons talking to you, like just absolutely screaming at you to say, hell no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that leap of faith. So what, what, how did you get over that? How did you quell that and, and just get the balls to go and do it? Uh, it seems like so long ago, to be honest, I, I don't necessarily think that it was that big a jump or leap of faith for me. Um, I, I did come in with $400 in my pocket, um, <laughs> which was crazy. And now it, it seems crazy, <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I, it, I wanted to explore. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to try something new and, and I didn't know what, what was going to, what was going to come my way. I had no idea. I'd never been to Australia before. I had never been to, uh, yeah, I had never been to the U S before. In fact, I had, I was very, I had not traveled much at all. Um, so it was exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to say the yep. least. I uh, also, I, I did not like to be boxed into a certain thing, into a certain, you know, area in, in, in India, you know, I believe that in India we're racist towards each other more than we are racist towards <laughs> anyone else. We divide on caste and on religion, on subcaste and subcreed, and there's all these different divisions. And um, I think it's probably what you know the British left behind. I don't know, but it's just um, like I said, I stood out for no reason. Like I really ha- ha- didn't try. So every time I asked a question, it would be this big, you know, taboo sort of thing, and. I couldn't wait. I, I, to be honest, I, I couldn't wait to sort of go to a place that I wasn't necessarily known. So I could mm-hmm. start and, and, and try to discover me and, and I'm still discovering me. So uh, <laughs> that, that was exciting, I suppose. And, and just with all the, 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 I guess, the long laundry list of all the jobs you've had, have they all been in Australia from your MBA to financial advisor to restaurant or to chef, now into small business owner, that's an incredible boom, 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 boom. Like, I, I guess really shiny object syndrome, right? If you could ever bottle that up and think, you know, Ronzi epitomizes that. Oh, God, what's that over there? What's that over there? What's that over there, right? It's, it, so it was it just a, you wanted to try it and said, screw it. I've already, I've already come this far. Why not try everything, you know? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think the best part about being an international student in Australia is that, you know, you, and, and with $400 is that you've got to find work immediately right. you do it quickly like you don't have a choice mm-hmm. uh, so my first job was delivering pizza uh, literally three four days after I arrived uh, because I, <laughs> I didn't have the money to obviously pay rent for the next week um, and I did everything in that time that I could possibly try bar driving a taxi because I didn't want to be bo- again didn't want to be boxed <laughs> that, right um, and uh, <laughs> not knowing that a few years later that you know Indian pizza delivery drivers would become a thing. Um, <laughs> but it did. Uh, so, yeah, I tried, you know, um, unpacking meat for Woolies at four in the morning uh, in, in like, you know, in the freezers with all these coats on, uh, you know, strawberry picking, uh, which didn't last long. I tried, um, I tried 7-Eleven for like two weeks. I did not last there <laughs> long at all. You know, it was just, uh, it was just ridiculous. Um, but but I tried all, a whole bunch of other things, which you know was was awesome. Like I I I thought at Griffith University, so I was doing my 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 master's thesis there. I did a research ma- research master, so I I actually wrote a thesis on software quality, mm-hmm. uh, which is crazy because I'm now implementing some of those processes within my, you know, within my business. Uh, so you you really know what kind of skills you pick up along the way that you can sure. actually use and, and and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I was always told that I was technical as a person. So uh, that's why I didn't even think of an MBA at the time. I just thought, all right, you've done your bachelor's of engineering and the next step is your master's of engineering. And that's really what I did. Right. Um, and I loved it. I loved the, 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 the whole, because I focused on process quality, 
quality process equals a quality product. So, you know, software quality is very difficult. It's difficult to measure. Like you can, you can measure the sturdiness of a table or something tangible, but software is very volatile. So it's very, and it was very different at the time. Now it's a lot more evolved 18 years on, but it was a cool, it was cool to get involved in it at the time. And mate, I got a, I got a job doing some cool stuff. Um, for a company called Beeline Technologies, uh, straight out of university. Actually, no, I, I, was, I was teaching. So before that, um, so just after I finished my thesis, I got that job as a software engineer uh, and they would do, we would do things like, you know, a tractor would wake up in the morning and go plow the field on itself by itself. Now okay. we have driverless cars and it's, it seems like, oh yeah, that sounds, but 18 years ago, that was like- That was cutting edge. <laughs> that was cutting edge, you know, that was amazing. And I'm sure it had to be in the middle of a paddock somewhere because the tractor couldn't hit anyone, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's true. Like, you know, we were doing stuff in Moree and, you know, St. George and like really outskirts. And, and we were giving farmers that had spent their whole lives building these farms, like so much more profit by giving them these, these technologies that will allow them to, uh, you know, hire less, I suppose, but also keep a lot more of the profits and, and that kind of stuff. So, that was amazing. That was really, really cool. And then I got a chance to implement my thesis, which was on software quality in this company. And they got bought over by a bigger company. So overnight, I became this global quality manager. And I <laughs> genuinely had no idea what it was like to be that because I was like thinking, wait, tomorrow, I'm not even sure of my job, what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, you know, it was just overnight that really happened. And then mm -hmm. they paid for an MBA. Um, that's how I got that. And I think the MBA switched on my entrepreneurial brain and away and, we went. And the rest is history, as they say. The rest yeah. is history. Well, mate, the reason I got you on the show today, because I, I did hear your story through uh, another podcast that I subscribed to, and I talk a lot about on this show, which is becoming a key person of influence. And a lot of people hear me rant on about like how you raise money for real estate and how you get started and syndication and raising capital and blah, blah, blah. But at the essence of all of that stuff, and any business development, it is really boils down to, again, key person of influence. How much does someone want to invest in you, invest in your idea, invest in the business? And it doesn't matter what the business is. It's like, as an entrepreneur, you're trying to just get a, get a sale. And these days, a lot of people are using different techniques like podcasting, like releasing books, creating a personal brand. And that personal brand is essentially making them uh, if they're advertising, right? So, so tell me how you personally that clicked on in your brain to then create now what is Amplify, and I'll let you explain exactly what it does and how you create that key purpose person means with status for everyone. Mm. Oh my god! Because as an engineer myself, I like I didn't know what the hell. What's a KPI? What's the key person? What's a what is content? What is what's a book? <laughs> sure. So. Um key person of influence is an amazing uh, program uh, and it's a book written by, you know, Daniel Priestley and he outlines exactly, exactly. You know, how the five steps to becoming a, a key person of influence. Uh, just backtracking <laughs> before that um, as part of my journey, I became a, you know, restaurateur and, right. and, and wanted to learn. I was always a cook. I was never a chef <laughs> and I wanted to learn to be a chef. Uh, so I employed a head chef that trained me in my own kitchen, starting off, you know, washing dishes. I washed dishes in and my he own trained you. Yeah, he trained me. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, graduated from washing dishes and then, you know, went to prep work and then went on a pans and then went on to, you know, uh, running the kitchen and doing the pass. And then finally got the head chef status un unconventionally, but, you know, got that. But it was my first business. And um, I literally had, I was so naive. I was, even though I had an MBA behind me, I had no real, you know, business experience at all. Um, and that, that business failed massively. Uh, <laughs> we did service on a Saturday night and on Sunday the locks were changed. And uh, <laughs> half a, I had a half, well, me and my wife had half a million dollars in debt. Wow. And uh, that was that was 26th of May 2013. So that was not long ago, mm -hmm. uh, in, in retro retrospect. But I I was given um you know a ticket because I did a 
friend's website for free. So she bought me this ticket to the brand accelerator at, at K- <laughs> Personal Influence. Um, I didn't have the money. I definitely didn't have the money. I had negative money at the time. And um, my wife actually forced me to join. She said, I've, wow. not, I've, I've not seen you this excited about something. We'll find the money. It's, it's, <laughs> but, um, so lucky. I was lucky because I, I wanted to postpone it. Uh, it was, you know, it was three months after we got married. Everyone told me when I asked them what the definition of a husband was to be the provider. <laughs> and it was all like all this stuff happening in your head. And then, and then you suddenly <laughs> are in this position. And, and luckily, you know, she had the courage for both of us. So I, I did the Key Person of Influence program, which was life changing uh, for me. Um, and one of the concepts, so going back to your original question, one of the concepts is change the way I thought about business right. was that every business today is a media company before they are a mechanic or a dentist or a real estate agent or uh, it doesn't matter what. A restaurateur. What a restaurateur as well. You know, you, you first things you do is you, you secure your, your website. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and what's the point of having a website if you, know, you don't rank in, mm-hmm. in Google? And what's the use of a website if someone's searching for stuff that you can do and they can't find you? And all these concepts come from, you know, the key person of influence being you have to be able to be found. And if someone Googles who you are and they don't, they, nothing comes up, then what are the chances of them doing business with you or wanting to um, interact with you? However, flip that around. And uh, you are a media company, irrespective of whatever field you're in. And, uh, you know, you, you, you get found. Mm-hmm. What, what are the chances of someone wanting to, to do that? Like the Key Person of Influence program has been by far that one moment in my life that has kind of made such a huge difference uh, from there. So that was my journey. I started it off, you know, thinking that I would start w- – would be in food, which mm-hmm. uh, was the plan. It, it, it happened that way. It started the Uber for chefing, which was called Bond Appetit. So chefs would go to people's houses and cook for them. And they knew they had to eat healthy, but they didn't have the time to make it happen. And chefs who had spare time would go to their homes. And, you know, I started the podcast to promote that business. And then um, we became a media company really quickly. <laughs> Uh, which was crazy. And then everyone was like, well, make me a media company too. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's how I got it, got into podcasting. And from that, um, we have Amplify today. That's, it's an incredible story. And I want to just, for all those people who don't know the key person of influence status or people or the people behind it, Dan Priestley um, and Carl, um, Carl uh, Glenn Carlson, Glenn Carlson, Glenn Carlson, check them out. Awesome guys, free book or whatever it is, but it, it changed my life as well. There's a couple of books up there. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is one of them uh, for our work week and the key person of influence status. But it's interesting when you read that book and they talk about you know, publishing and platform and all that sort of stuff, just how, when you just the blinkers nearly come off is if like you can apply the rules to any business. Um, and through some of my mentors here in the United States, it's about developing that brand and, and, and leaning into what you are and, and, and you are a brand first and foremost in, in real estate investing. They talk about you're going to attract your first investor because they like to invest in you, not necessarily what the deal is. And it's the same with business, right? It's, they invest in you, in you first, then the business second. Um, so talk to me a little bit about how those blinkers came off for you. And it sounded like it came off a pretty big way. And, and, and then how quickly that scaled because it sounds like Bon, bon Appetit uh, was, was a business but then very quickly transformed or as, as KPI says, pivot into something else, right? Totally. Um, yes. So Bond Appetit, uh, you know, was a, was a, I created the, the, the business and then started the podcast and the podcast at the time, you know, um, dude, I had no money. <laughs> like it, I was literally trying to pay off every single bit of debt that, that, that we had. So every bit of money that was coming in was sort of going to paying off that debt. Um, I remember buying my podcast kit, $179 with I think $210 in the account. Uh, 
and <laughs> even now when I talk about like I'm talking about it now it seems like wow that, that's crazy but at the time it was just something that needed to be done mm-hmm. um, and then Bon Appetit got listened to like you know a million times I think in uh, six months or something wow. and, yeah and um, iTunes Australia Plus that it you know on the banner section next to Triple J and ABC Radio I don't know where they got the, the, the graphics from but <laughs> You know, suddenly one day someone's like send me a message saying how did you manage to do this <laughs> like going, wait a minute how how am i on itunes like this like uh, so um yeah and and then when that happened you know a lot of my key person of influence friends a lot of my business owner friends kind of went you know help me do this as well because it makes so much sense and um i created a a course which was an outline of a course of how to you know uh, start your own podcast mm-hmm. and have and make it make it your media agency for for your business and in a week i sold eight 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 of those and made 32 grand wow in, in, in the account like we, there was 32 grand in the account <laughs> in a week and a half and i went wait a minute i don't even have the whole course done yet wow. i just i just i just have the outline and that that was another big business lesson for me that you know proving product market fit is so important um with the restaurant i sunk all these costs into creating uh the restaurant before people could buy from it i didn't even know whether they wanted what i had to sell right at all um but this way i could find out whether someone wanted the stuff I was creating before actually going and putting all this, uh, you know, effort and sunk cost into, into stuff. So, so people were paying you prior to even seeing any sort of hard evidence of any course, any fancy videos, any front end interface. That's incredible. That's really incredible. I, I, I actually, so I took that one step further with Amplify and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but what, what was happening was I suddenly realized that, you know, this was a thing. So I already had, some sort of trust because these people that sure. bought from me at the time kind of knew about Bon Appetit and, and, and the listeners and you know being on iTunes so they they had some thing to go by it was not they were not they were not a cold audience um, to put that in perspective right but then then I started going into a cold audience so I started going to businesses and say hey guys you got to start a podcast mm-hmm. and they would go, they would just tell me to go you know myself and uh <laughs> they're like you know i've got other things to deal with like team and cash flow and and all this other stuff and you're telling me to start a podcast you're a jackass um so I was like wait something i'm doing something wrong here and it took me a few months and then i tried again and i would go in, into the businesses and say hey guys you need to storytell using podcasts and then they would think about it and then they would tell me to myself and and i was like wait a minute okay i'm getting close and uh then the idea for amplify came around and and i said would go into businesses and say you know how every conversion in a business happens in a conversation it doesn't matter whether you're getting a partner on board board or, or a team member or a client they all happen in conversations and you need to harness the power of conversation and then they would think about it and go Oh, so I should start a podcast. <laughs> so I was getting, I finally got, you know, the pitch right. right. And I said to myself at the time, I'm not going to spend a single cent on branding, on website. I f- I'm first going to get 10 beta clients who are going to be willing to come on board at 50% of the normal costs and be beta clients and they'll know that they are beta clients. And uh, I remember like two and a half months, I had eight and I had eight and I had a phone call from one of them and said, Hey, you know, I have a friend of mine who has this business and they'd be the perfect, you know, client. What's your business called? And I went, oh, damn, I've got to name this thing now. <laughs> so I didn't even have a name. Uh, but yet they were pitching for you to someone else. Yes. So they're like, oh, this guy, there's a guy who's got this great idea. He's going to convert all this content for you. You're going to go nuts, right? Yeah. 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 And it was just the idea of being able to, to take conversations and make it, you know, uh, work for you because we're having them all the time, right? Right. 
It's right. just about being able to, you know, how many times have we had a conversation that he said, like, I wish someone was a fly on the wall. I wish one of my prospects was a fly on the wall uh, listening to this conversation. So the, the, I was able to put the concept in a way that, you know, it made sense. And also it was easy to, to convey that uh, to someone else if, you know, they were, they were doing that kind of stuff. So then I named it, I think we first 21 clients, we didn't have a website. Uh, then we started putting, you know, money into branding and website and, um, and then wrote the book and, and, and um, won a whole bunch of awards that year. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Won a whole bunch of awards that year. And um, yeah. Did you write it yourself or did you use any hacks that I know the KPIs love to hack, hack away at? <laughs> yeah. So um, I wrote it myself, but I think I'm one of the few authors in the world that, got the manuscript back from the editors and just literally went, accept all changes. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, you know, the editor knows more than I do. So, or better than I do and how it's going to sound right. And just accept all changes and, and, um, and away we went. Awesome. Awesome. But, to, but back to your, the, the whole concept of, you know, I think it's so important that with your restaurant business, you were sinking money into it. And you had no product, you had no proof of concept. Yet this other business, people had developed trust with you because you started your own podcast. You think, hey, this guy's already done really well. And and before I go on with my second question, was that podcast what was it was it a fluke or was it, you know, uh, did you methodically plan it out and say, Oh, this is gonna be really, really popular and I just knew that it's gonna be really, really popular? No, it was it was a fluke, dude. Yeah, wow. it was wow. a total fluke. Um, that's, that's awesome. in the sense that in the sense that I, I followed stuff that was out there, but it was common knowledge. It wasn't like any brain science behind it. Right. Uh, right. The only thing that I did was I released three episodes a week. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of content at the beginning. Went, yeah, I went, I went all out. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, I just, I started to draw conclusions. Like hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. I started to draw conclusions. Um, after implementing stuff so trying work if it worked did more of that if it didn't work stop doing that sure sure so amplify came from what like you'd started this business what was the business that you were trying to help other people besides just capturing conversations what do what are you doing with it now to help them grow their business so uh, a variety of things first of all you know when i started uh, amplify I had about you know three and a bit years of um, experience I suppose and um, in this field that's a lot uh, it's not like podcasting used to be a designation you know 10 right. years ago uh, so I, su I suppose I had enough of experience um, in the field but what I started to, to realize that is is the most important thing is that launching audio is only a small part of the whole process. Uh, there's like a whole, whole bunch of steps before and a whole bunch of steps afterwards. So Amplify, A-M-P-L-I-F-Y, is seven steps that we actually implement for our clients. And L is launch audio. So it's in, the, in between three steps before and three steps afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I kind of started to think about, you know, how many authors write books that... Uh, you know, I in their garage that no one ever gets a chance to read. So this all this stuff that happens on the back end of 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 creating whatever it is that you create, whether it is you know the you know the podcast or the or the book or or, or the YouTube video or the blog you write, just all this marketing that comes on the back end of that. Right. But then there's all this stuff that happens before that. Right. You need to. Real understand who your audience is. So A, you analyze your audience. Who's your audience? Why are you different? And how can you, how can you partner with people? So figure out the people, right? The people aspect. That's the A part of, of, of Amplify. M is molding your brand to the audiences. So you're different for a reason. You have skills and unique abilities that you got to build on. And you know, you know who your people are. So then you build your brand on that. P is product ecosystem. It's actually one of the P's from the key person of influence is, the, is product, productization. And creating a product is 
allows you to have something to sell, right? right? Uh, and then you launch your audio. Uh, then you launch your podcast. And then from there, uh, you intensify your messaging by taking that piece of audio and, and, and multiplying it. So we can take any piece of audio and create anywhere between 70 and 150 unique pieces of content from that wow. one piece of audio. Wow. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> some, sometimes I think, well, that totally makes sense. Why didn't anyone think <laughs> before? Um, and, uh, and then we foster engagement because engagement is key. Engagement builds trust. Uh, and that's when people buy from you. And then why is yield on investment? What's the point in doing any marketing strategy if you have no ROI? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it's key to start with create the, with the creative element while also merging the commercial element with it. So we have these two camps, right? We have the, the commercial people that kind of go, I'm not going to do that unless there's an ROI. Yep. And you go dude, like, you know, when you have coffee with your mom, what's the ROI on that? Right. And you know, it's all, it's, but it's only single minded, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the other creative camp who, who go, well, I'm going to create my art. And I can't sell it because, you know, I'll be selling my soul and I shouldn't be money from this. And there's all this other narrative that's around it. And, and the creative and the commercial just need to have a baby together. That's the <laughs> simple way to put it, right? Right. So, so the Amplify process, basically, what it does is it builds, it, has, it, it, it creates a, a machine for uh, the business where the business owner spends 10% of their time in the audio piece of make, doing the recording or, or creating that content. And the machine does everything else. It just uh, keeps doing that work over and over again while, you know, hopefully the business owner does something that they love. So that, that's really important that the podcast or launching the audio part is so beneficial to the entrepreneur, or the business owner, or the key person of influence that, they can't wait to have that conversation. They can't right. wait you know, to do that recording because they're having fun. Mm -hmm. And we take all the unfun parts and, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 do, and, and work our magic on that. So you're talking about like show notes and Instagram messages and YouTube videos and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, because I know in myself, and this has been a very, you know, oh, oh my gosh, again, being a structural engineer, I didn't have any idea about when I started this podcast how much content you can create and through this podcast, I'm actually launching a book, a physical yeah. book. And then from that book, I'm going to be launching another book and it's all just rinse and repeat. You know, again, go back to the media company desk. This is evergreen content, right? Someone can listen to this in a year's time and still have the same effect as, you know, it's not, the, it's not like the news where the news cycle, like you're not going to watch the news from six months ago. The news isn't relevant from six months ago, but this content, evergreen content is. So, what are the different platforms that you like to spread that content, that, that audio content across? Uh, is it physical? Is it hard? Is it digital? Is it all of the above? All of the above. I mean, we uh, realized uh, in 2017, so last year, that, um, that it, the weird thing was Amazon. There was no one in Australia that could upload to, to Audible in Australia. Hmm. Okay. And, and, and I found that weird. I'm like, wait, wait, why? W what's the deal here? And there were all these like little, you know, companies that were hacking their way through by having, uh, you know, a relative in the States and you know, <laughs> Audible there. And I said, why can't we just upload to Audible in Australia? So <laughs> I decided to take that on and, 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 and figure that out. And um, we, we got in touch with Amazon. And we became the first agency in Australia that could upload to Audible. Wow. <laughs> and I find that crazy that no one even approached Amazon before that. Um, because I was there in my hoodie signing this deal <laughs> with eight lawyers around the table. Um, thinking, I can't believe this is not done before. This is, this is insane. But uh, we do it in all those different ways. And then once we had that deal on and we were just creating audiobooks, we also decided that uh, wait a minute, how can we make it easier for the client? And, uh, and uh, we started doing extractions. So we would extract initially the concept of the book, uh, validate that concept, then go and extract each chapter and then put that together, edit it, 
create the whole book, then do the audio book. And then from the audio book, we'd create a whole new product that uh, someone could buy from, you know, the book. I mean, the book could be, you know, broken down into a product. So, you know, it's, it's about just being able to, to make it as easy for your customers as possible because, you know, every time we add a new layer of um, credibility or a new layer of content or a new way that they get known to be a KPI, um, everything raises, everything oh. goes up, everything goes up like it in one go. So rather than focus on, you know, the let me get one client or two clients or three clients, let's just focus on, on how can we raise the value of the brand instantly. Right. Um, and, and that's really, it's, it's really been one foot in front of the other, dude. That's really. awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, that's an incredible story. And I guess for all those people out there listening, thinking, you know, cause here in the States is every man and his dog seems to have a, have a podcast now. <laughs> and, you know, not everyone's going to have the success that Bond Appetit had straight off the bat. So what do you say to those skeptical people who are business owners who do say, who put up the wall that says, Oh, I've got to work on profit and teams and all that sort of crap. And, and, and how do you, you know, understand that it's not about the size of the tribe. It's more about who you reach and how you, and, you know, you know, like is it, it's not just an extension of the business card, if that makes sense. Sure. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's totally understandable. Like it's totally understandable for them to put up their wall. Uh, you know, business is hard. It's a lonely road and everyone's trying to sell stuff to everyone else. Like is, there's no shortage of, uh, people trying to, you know, uh, make sure that, someone buys their stuff. There's no shortage of that. So right. absolutely put your wall up and, 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 um, and just find out more is, is what I'd say. But if, if I had, a if I had to put all that stuff into context, um, it's, it's really interesting that there is like 90% of the podcasts out there have 77 episodes or less. Wow. Is that in Australia? Or is that worldwide? It's worldwide. That's, wow, worldwide. That's crazy. Seems That's like correct. everyone, everyone I'm competing with has more than that. <laughs> yeah. You can imagine how many of them are there that just like because it's hard work. It's not. It's not. It's not easy. But someone listening to that can go, well, that that shows you podcasting does doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But someone else could listen to that and kind of go, well, wait a minute, I'm only competing with ten percent of the total podcasts out there. So how difficult do you, does it have to be for me to you know? So, so the, the best part about a podcast, it's easy to create. The worst part about a podcast is that it's easy to create. <laughs> and and, and uh, just like blogging was at one time, people, you know, uh, discounted it. Just mm -hmm. like YouTubing was a while ago, people discounted it. Um, and, and, you know, audio is in the same space right now. Uh, but if you, if you step back and think of a few things, one, every single change that we can see in human history, um, has happened because there was one speech that changed the way we thought of mm -hmm. things. You can think of the Martin Luther King speech. You can think of Steve Jobs being on stage talking about the phone with one button. Every thought, everyone thought he was learning. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, speech has been part of us communicating ideas, big ideas for a long time. Parents talk to their kids before they're born in their mother's womb. It's a <laughs> huge connection, right? Right. If, if there's a way that you can have that huge connection on, on a weekly basis, uh, why wouldn't you want to have that? Right. Is, is, is my argument. If, if, the, if the hard way that you, you listen to is already in their pockets and it's the first screen that you look at and the last screen you look at every single day, why would you, wouldn't you want to be present on that screen as a business owner? 100% be skeptical, 100% check, check whether what I'm saying or anyone else is saying makes sense. And, you know, sometimes you're at a stage in business that you're not ready to put money into marketing. You're not ready and, 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 and accept that because we go through these different ceilings. The first ceiling is I have an idea, how do I make it a reality? And you think like, once I figure this out, it's, it's, it's all sailing from there. Then the next step is, you know, you've got to prove product market fit. 
and mm-hmm. you think once I sort this out, it's awesome. And uh, the next ceiling is you go and get a whole bunch of sales and you think, oh, once I got that, I've sorted it out. Then you realize <laughs> you're doing everything yourself. Then you have to have team. Right. You have team and then you've got to sort out the operations in the team. That's the next, you know, you've got to make sure that everyone's functioning properly. And the next ceiling from that is culture. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, there's never going to be, you know, uh, a time where you're worry free. <laughs> However, once you get your cash flow sorted, if you can create for yourself a marketing machine that generates leads for you on a regular basis, then you have the capacity to go and focus on team. Then you have the capacity to go focus on operations and on culture without having to keep going back to get sales and leads and, and flip-flopping between those two problems. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes, makes, makes total amount of sense. And, I, and look, I'm picking up whatever, what everyone's putting down. You know, I, I, I'm, all, I'm all, all aboard because, you know, I started this podcast because no one was talking to international investors in the United States. So, like, it's a niche, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. I don't have the, the huge lofty successes, but I have a really strong tribe of people who love to invest in my deals and all that sort of stuff. And, and that, I think, was what I was trying to get at is that, there's so many niches out there and you've got a niche till it hurts, but it's not about being the next Tony Robbins or the next Tim Ferriss or, you know, the next Bond Appetit. It's just about reaching your tribe in an effective way and being continually in front of your tribe. So you don't lose contact. And then you, you know, they can refer you on to some, someone else and that can bring into the ecosystems and, and yada, yada, yada. 100%. And, and one of the things that I, 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 I forgot to mention is, is the relationships you build. This is like networking right. on steroids, dude. Right. This is this is like this 100%. is the amount the amount of relationships that I've built and created over the lot, like five or six hundred odd episodes that are out in the world that 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 I put out there. Like the relationships have been ridiculous, huge. ridiculously awesome. Um, yeah, so that's but, a huge. And I don't know about yourself, but for me personally, like I get off these podcasts, and you know, it's nearly like only like a therapy session <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> you know like because you know that other entrepreneurs are out there struggling and it's like it's it's good to hear their story and and that's why people are so gravitated towards that sort of the how did you get started like oh, i want to know how you got started it's like it's not just shiny rainbows and you know unicorns it's a it's bloody slumming it and trying to just grind your way through to the success to whatever success may look like right and it's just a constant grind 100 percent, man even Today, I walked into the office and uh, we have built Amplify on Freedom. So we still work in a co-working space Mm -hmm. uh, and all our team around the world work in co-working spaces. Um, And uh, even today, I I walked in here and I turned on all the lights. So I'm still the first one here. I'm still the last one to leave. And and I don't think that um, you talk to, you you know, you listen to any, 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 rappers any you know sports people any entrepreneurs or any, oh, they, they've all put in the hard yards yep. and i don't know really different yeah yep so mate walk me through how people can get involved in amplify what is the sort of the benchmark then what is the sort of the premium services and what is maybe the free stuff that you might have that people can just get more wrapped in what you do yeah um so <laughs> There's, there's so many different things. I mean, we keep innovating on, on, on our own products all the time because, you know, we get feedback from our clients all the time. So it, it, we think of ourselves, we think of ourselves as, as the one-stop marketing shop. We, the only difference is that we base everything from conversation. For us, conversation is, you know, the bedrock from where we can create all the value. Uh, last year, we had a few unique situations where, you know, we got really well known and we had business owners that would come and say, here's my 10 grand a month, market us. <laughs> and we're like, no. Uh, and we didn't know what that really meant until, you know, they were two or three months down the line and they were okay paying that kind of money, but didn't want to be involved. And we're like, no, we actually need you to be here, to, to be here even if it's an hour a week. Um, even if it's, you know, you know, three hours a month or something, we need you to be able to build from, uh, and it's, I, I, and they were like, no, just put money on ads. I'm like, no, that does not work. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work at all. And they're like, but other agencies are doing that. 
And we suddenly realized, wait a minute, if we were being different, we had to communicate differently. We had to do things differently. We had to actually communicate the value that we were giving our customers in a way that they understood. Because if they had been to another agency before us, chances are they were trying to communicate, they were trying to compare us to them uh, and any other agency they had dealt with before. And we were not like any of that stuff. So at the top end, uh, the blue chip level, our clients pay us 10 grand a month and they get the whole Amplify framework implemented in their business along with SEO and Facebook ads and, and the works video, like everything that you can possibly potentially think of. Think about. Right. Um, then we have a first class level, which is just above five grand a month. And that's the Amplify framework, AMPLFY, you know, functioning, running into the business. And it's just implemented day in and day out. Uh, we create the product ecosystems. We make sure uh, messaging is done. We continuously brand. All that stuff is sort of included in, in that. So when someone's thinking, I need to get a full-time marketing person on board and I don't want to really manage them mm -hmm. or what skills they'd have and don't have and all that kind of stuff, that's our blue chip level. Yep. So that's kind of, you know, being able to hire someone at 120 grand a, a year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, someone trying to hire someone part-time to do their marketing is, is, is at the, the, the five. 60 grand. Yeah, yeah, 60 right. Right. The only difference is that, uh, just take the first class as an example, we plug in uh, eight different people. Wow. So rather than get one per, so yeah, so at the, at the, at the 60 grand level, it's like eight different people from content writers, social media managers, marketing managers, strategy, uh, content writers. Um, actually we got our content down pat. It's been, <laughs> been probably the best part of our, you know, our offerings, um, design graphics, all that stuff like at, at 60 grand a year is like a no brainer, right? right for right. companies that, that are in that position. And uh, then, then we realized that um, we had to build marketing plinth, marketing foundation. And uh, we have a 13 week product where, you know, we have extraction with the client. And um, in 13 weeks, we give them 24 articles a um, uh, uh, hundred social media messages, 50 images, a lead magnet. Um, and we, we build that foundation for them. So we understand them, they understand what we do. And then based on that foundation, we can decide, do we implement the Amplify framework for them now? Or do they need to go and wait? And you know, maybe the plan is enough. So we can decide and we, this, they don't have to commit right. to a, a one year with us um so th those are those are our products we have the library of sound which is the audiobook agency and the and the extraction stuff um and uh we've started to do we started to do only podcasts for some of our clients so some clients have already have an existing podcast on or have a perfect concept that we don't need to implement any strategy on and then, then we don't do the AMP part of things. So we don't do the productization or any of that stuff. We just do the L and the I, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, the weekly, the weekly the podcast chat. production with yep. content. And, um, and it's really crazy, Reid, because each of those episodes uh, has 77 different things that we do every week. Wow for wow. our clients every week for every single episode. <laughs> so in terms of the value that they get, it's like ridiculous because if they had to do them th themselves, themselves, it's, it's a long no, time. Yeah, or even if they had to hire someone to do all that stuff, hundred percent, that, that's like a lot of work. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, that's the restaurant menu, right? <laughs> as, as the boys like to say, totally. awesome, man. Well, look, this has been an absolute incredible, incredible talk. I don't, I don't want to be conscious of your time, but we didn't really get into the United States aspect of it, but for everyone who's listening out there, it's the fact that we, you are to become a key person of influence. You need to have incredible content. And that's why we've got you on the show today. Um, but you are president in the United States, correct? That's what, what, that's what right. I'm sure. What I'm that's sure. Yeah. So the president in 13 time zones, is that correct? Yeah. 12, 13, we just did like 
three highs this week. So I'm sure that 12 <laughs> goes up a little bit, but uh, yeah, 12 time zones. 12 time zones. That's awesome. Well, mate, at the end of every show, I like to ask my guests to give me their lightning round. You ready to jump into it? Let's do it, man. All right, buddy. What is the daily habit you practice to keep on track towards your goals? I wake up every morning at 4.30. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's, been, uh, <laughs> it's been one of the things that has changed my life. And um, my wife still thinks that I'm nuts because uh, <laughs> I don't need to anymore. But I, I think that I need to. I think it, it's the launch of my day and spending that time on me, you know, the meditation and, and being grateful. And I think that has huge yes. impacts. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm less snappier sometimes <laughs> because I do that. So yeah, 4.30 every morning. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, who's the most influential in your, in your career? Who's the most influential person in your career today? Well, I, 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 I want to say the first name that comes to mind is Batman for some reason. <laughs> it's, not for, Good. Batman. <laughs> it's not for some reason. It's, it's that um, I, I resonate with the character uh, right. a lot because Batman does um, the right thing irrespective of how hard it is and right. something that that i try and do every i get in, in hindsight i get some of the stuff wrong don't i'm not i'm not 100 percent right all the time at all <laughs> by no stretch of the imagination but i have to say the key person of influence program has been big 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 yes. and very influential for me Yes, I, I would, I would, I would tend to agree, uh, mate. I know that you have a huge digital marketing business, but what's the number one tool, whether it be physical, digital, whatever it might be, that you use to, you know, keep the business chugging forward, or, or just a something that you use every day that helps work, make it work? Um, the iPad for me was one hmm. of those, those those things that I I. I did not buy one of those Apple products that I didn't want to buy because I'm like, I got the, I got the MacBook. Uh, I got the phone. I have the watch. I do. I really need the iPad. <laughs> um, but luckily I bought it because it has put like, and I, and the pen because I, my notes right now, like I can, I, I'm really good with diagrams to explain concepts. I use models and, mm-hmm. and, and, and I use those explanations. So to get them in one place has been amazing. And every Monday morning, I do a brain dump of all the tasks that are in my head. And that list gets sent to the whole team. So everyone kind of knows what's in Ronsley's head that <laughs> that's irritating him. So that practice um, of writing in a digital format that allows it to be spread uh, is, is huge. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mate, what is the biggest failure you've uh, experienced in your career and what did you learn from that failure? The restaurant by far has been, you know, one of the, the things that uh, <laughs> I still have uh, battle scars from, but uh, you know, half a million in debt, three months after being married. I think what I learned from that was um, I had no intention of being married, to be honest. <laughs> I, I actually thought I would, always be single uh and uh, when i was ready to have a kid i'd just adopt that literally that was my plan wow until i met rochelle and she just messed everything up for me i had (laughs) out the window but i i asked a whole bunch of people i looked up to what the definition of husband was and they were like you know protector and provider and all that kind of stuff and it's almost like the universe kind of went well learn what it's like to be a real husband and it was it was being vulnerable and learning how to how to express myself and uh, learning that I didn't have to be, you know, the man all the time or whatever that definition is. So I think that lesson has been for me has changed. I has changed the way I see the world, the perspective. I it's given me emotional intelligence which I had none of before. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. definitely. One. That's yeah. awesome, man. No, definitely. It's a pretty different perspective of having someone else you've got to think of besides yourself is pretty important. I've had to learn that being, a, you know, being an entrepreneur myself is just like, you're always like, go, 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 go. But you've got to take a step back and think, oh, what about them? Because <laughs> it's two in this relationship, right? So, yeah. yeah, mate, last question. Where can people reach you to continue the conversation? Ronsley.com.au. Uh, all the projects I work on, we, we try to keep that as uh, as current as possible. Um, you know, the podcast obviously is huge uh, in terms of listening. So you get a, 
a chance to hear what's so the, I don't really have set questions. I really try to, you know, scratch my own itch, I suppose, with every right. guest I'm on the show. And I feel right, like right, my right. only job as a host is to get that story. <laughs> so, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, listen, to, listen to either one of the podcasts. Should I start a podcast? dot com uh, because everyone kept asking me should I start a podcast honestly I'm like let's start that podcast <laughs> and uh, the Bond Apple podcast as well awesome awesome well mate thank you so much for dropping by I'm really in, just incredibly humbled by you know the the knowledge that you brought just some of the, the key takeaway points from today was just you know creating that key person of influence status I think it's really important but also understanding how much content you can create through conversations and I think one of the key pieces was that if you could record every conversation that you have with a client like imagine if you could take it to the rest of your clients and, and how much gold that you can create and I think your business and amplify is, cap, is is all about capturing that and and then for those people out there who are listening who don't really get their head wrapped around it just yet just know that we're in 2018, people want to know your message, they want to get around you and you're going to be able to amplify your business by having more content online and essentially digital assets, right? Did I leave anything out then? <laughs> no, totally. Like, you know, if someone's looking to solve a problem, they're first going to Google it. Right. Uh, and, and you really want to be the business that, they, that, they, that tries to solve that problem. Right, um, 100%. That, so, yeah. 100%. Well, mate, thank you for dropping by. Enjoy the rest of your week and we'll catch up soon. Thanks, buddy. Thank you for this. This has been awesome. Well, there you have it. Another cracking episode jam-packed with some incredible actionable steps and advice. If you do want any of the show notes from today's show, head to my website, readgoosens.com. Remember to click on the podcast tab. Thanks again for taking some time out of your day to tune in to continue to grow your financial IQ because that's what we're all about here on this show. We're going to do this all again next week. So take care, be safe. Remember, happy investing. Thanks, man. That was awesome. <laughs>